2002 as a church, we really, um, we really had to have a good look at how we were doing missions. And um, as a church, we decided to, rather than have this long arm sort of length uh, missions work in places like Kenya and uh, Zambia and things like that, we really had to start looking at something that we could touch, something that we could feel, something we could, where we could send people along and uh, uh, big teams that could go along. And we found that it was just not working the way it was working. And um, in 2002, we decided to link up with a company called Dorcas Aid, which is an aid company from, from the Netherlands. And we went on our first trip to, to Lesotho. The trip consisted of 21 people. Um, it was a small team, but it was great. It was, uh, you know, we didn't know where we were going. We had no idea what was, what was, what was gonna happen. And uh, I don't think any of us had actually been to Lesotho. It was just, it was just a, a, a place right in the middle of Africa, South Africa. And we didn't realize what was actually coming our way. The trip took off here, 21 people as I mentioned, and it was, it was a fantastic trip. It, it, it just, it was two days of traveling, um, the last day taking almost nine hours just to travel the last 50 kilometers. And, um, and just arriving there, we were all in absolute awe of, of what was going on um, in the studio. And um, I think what, what really touched me was the absolute poverty um, in the city. It was just, it was phenomenal. I, we, we couldn't believe how kids were taught. Most of the men had just gone off and gone off to the mines and um, and left the women and children, whether being orphaned or actual uh, children that had been mothered by a single mother. And um, I think that, that really rang home to us as well. The other thing that we, we noticed was the absolute lack of ministry. Um, you had churches. Um, the city is pretty well churched but just the, the quality of the ministry was just really lacking and uh, the ministry was just really in a bad state of affairs um, and it really needed assistance. Of course, there were things that we never even knew existed. I mean, the shepherds, there were shepherds in a place right in the middle of South Africa. Um, it was almost going back to Bible times and uh, here these shepherds were doing shepherd work in the different areas just like it was done by David. This led us to 2004 where we, um, we were going to actually take a planned team and we actually planned the route, we planned everything in the suit of that year. And uh, this is basically where we left. We, we had a prayer meeting right here. Um, there were about 45 of us and yeah, it started here. That was the official, official start um, in 2004 of a planned, structured team going and knowing exactly what they were going to do. And uh, yeah, I think the rest is history. So what has the last 10 years given us? Well, interesting figures. Over 60 trips over the last 10 years. Um, trips done by Urban Edge, mostly. Um, 3,000 people um, have traveled to Lesotho over this while. And then of course, uh, international partners. We, um, we, we, we linked up with Chi Alpha. Fantastic group of people, really great. Yeah, and then of course, seven million Rand invested um, by you, the church in reality and uh, it, it's just amazing. I, I still think about that one as well because that all had to come from the people either sitting here who have sat in these chairs before and uh, it's, it's phenomenal. I, I, I can't thank the people enough. We built four schools in various regions. Uh, schools in, in, in Simon Kong itself, two there. Um, down in the south, a place called Pilani built a school there and, and we've actually built a school in a remote village called Habati which was a phenomenal feat because it, it re we really battled to get stuff there. I mean, we, you couldn't get there, you could only get there on horseback. Um, and we were able to get there on four by fours with God's grace and uh, we were able to build a school there. We built a bridge uh, for the community. One of the rivers had washed away. The, the only bridge that the, particularly the older community <coughs> could use to get to town. And we built this bridge. We built seven houses in reality and the vision that came out of that was an orphanage. And we literally, as a church and as teams going up there, went and restructured that whole place and built a, a, a dining room. We built a place for 80 orphans to live. And it's a set up orphan village at the moment. 300,000 shepherds in Lesotho, marginalized, 
the poorest of the poor, um, basically a lot of them orphans, but looking after the livestock of Lesotho. And we as a church we were fortunate enough to be able to build a school for them. We built two schools in fact, and we were able to, to give them this opportunity to learn the basic things of education, just giving them something to hold on to and giving them an opportunity for the future. I think the greatest honor for the teams that have gone there was the fact that we've been able to minister to 20,000 people. In 2010, we planted a church at the University in Roma, 5,000 students, and although there are churches there, but no church like the culture that we have. I really think we should make mention of the, the people that actually have gone on these trips. Although it's not a primary objective of the trip, but just the change in the people that have gone and come back. So many of those people are in leadership positions in the church today. And they went on these trips without knowing what to expect. Um, you as a member of the church or somebody that wants to go on this trip, this is going to change you. This is going to change the way you think about things. It's going to change the way you think about yourself. And it's a huge opportunity. And I just want to thank all the people that have gone and, and the attitude that they've had out, out in the field. And the attitude of the leaders as well has just been phenomenal. And yeah, it's just been amazing. We're sitting here in a courtyard at uh, John Rutherford's office. And the reason why we, we're sitting here is because this is where it all began. 40 people coming together in this courtyard, praying and believing as they embarked on their first trip into Lesotho. So as we're sitting here today again in this courtyard where the past began, this is where the future will continue. Just like we've had a history, we also believe that there's a future. And vision is such an important thing, and vision never has to die. But sometimes things need to shift and change, and we believe that God has taken us into the next phase of our future. And a big part of our future is establishing churches, uh, establishing local churches. We have Julius and Liesel as a missionary couple in the university town of Roma, where we believe that if we can impact students, they can go back into their villages and begin to plant churches and establish the kingdom of God in their local church. Not only that, but we have Ferdi and Lulu Fisser in Semon Kong as another missionary couple and we've just started planting local churches in the neighboring areas of Semong Kong. We also believe in education. Education is very important. We want to train local pastors and train local leaders. We believe that we can start a Bible school there eventually in the town of Semong Kong. And education is so fundamental to people's future. And just as we've partnered with establishing shepherd schools, we want to continue to be involved in education because education gives people a hope and a future and brings poverty alleviation to local areas. And so we want to be a part of a great future, just as one man, you John, were a part of the beginnings. So we believe every individual can be a part of the future. It took one man to dream, and I believe that it can take many individuals to create a great future, believing God for the city.